And what's being viewed as a watershed moment for the trans community? The Oscar-nominated star of the movie Juno has come out as transgender. Transgender and non-binary visibility has moved from the margins into the mainstream. So MJ, please stand up and let's give her the ovation that she deserves to hear. But beyond the headlines, what does this mean for the average transgender person? 18 trans women of color killed this year alone. As long as trans women of color are suffering and dying in the streets, I'm going to hold off a little bit on the celebration. Every breath a trans person takes is an act of revolution. Transgender people helped kick off the fight for gay equality, but their fight for civil rights has been decades in the making. We don't want anything other than our humanity. Getting out of the shower and the towels around your waist and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, there I am. With celebrities like Elliot Page describing being born with a body that didn't match his internal sense of who he is. Elliot Page is living his truth. And transgender actresses Laverne Cox, Michaela J. Rodriguez, and India Moore being celebrated by their peers, you might think society has reached a new level of understanding. But activist Lords Ashley Hunter Fowler says you would be mistaken. The community that I work for is wondering how they're going to eat tonight, wondering if they're going to have health coverage, wondering if they're even going to make it back to the shelter where they're staying. In 2002, Hunter Fowler came to New York City at age 26 on a one-way bus ticket from Detroit with $20 in her pocket. She planned on doing community service work in exchange for a place to stay. But when she went to a women's shelter, she was turned away for being transgender and sent to a men's shelter where she says she was sexually assaulted. There was nothing that I can do. When I went to the shelter staff to tell them what had happened to me, they blamed me. They told me that I didn't have to be there that it was my choice to live this lifestyle that I was living. And so, for me, having to have those experiences, it's just a snapshot of what we have to go through. Just to live. Most trans people would rather sleep under um, a overpass or in the park, then have to deal with that type of violence. Hunter Fowler runs the Trans Women of Color Collective to provide leadership and raise awareness, not only about current events, but historical ones as well. We come from a rich legacy of revolutionary freedom fighters. Historically, those stories have been erased um, from the history books. What history remembers is the 1969 Stonewall Inn Uprising, the birthplace of today's gay rights movement. A routine police raid on an unlicensed bar, the Stonewall Inn, a gay bar in Greenwich Village. But what's been largely forgotten is the role transgender women played in kicking off that movement. Activist Randy Wicker describes how there were restrictions against serving alcohol to homosexuals in the 1960s and... Being in drag was illegal in those days. Dancing was permitted, although, of course, a white light would come on if a policeman came in and you had to stop dancing or find a member of the opposite sex to dance with. They really reached a point where they said, we're tired of this. And so the next time the police raided, things took a different turn. Suddenly, the customers were giving the police a hard time. For the first time, the clientele sort of fought back. The protests lasted for days, and transgender people were among the hundreds who took part. Transgender people were the most motivated to fight back because they had been abused the worst by the system. But also, the second thing is they had nothing to lose. For them, it was a great opportunity to get up on a soapbox and really give it to society. What have you been doing to us? You know, you're so wrong. One of the early icons in the fight for transgender rights was the late Sylvia Rivera. Sylvia always thought of Stonewall as the beginning of her activism 
to make changes in the world. I was grateful to be there to see the revolution being born. She really was the mother of the transgender movement. Sylvia was a Puerto Rican street drag queen who, along with her friend Marsha P. Johnson, created Star House, a refuge for transgender runaways. These kids, you know, they were going to end up being just ground up by the system, you know, not being able to find jobs, being forced into prostitution. Sylvia and Marsha hadn't lived it, so they knew what they were doing. The survival instincts that made Rivera a fierce advocate were at odds, she said, with a gay rights movement that was trying to establish a more conventional identity. We do not fit into their role of Main Street gay men and women. Rivera stormed the stage after being excluded from a 1973 gay rights rally in New York City's Washington Square Park. She demanded that transgender people be recognized as part of the burgeoning lesbian and gay rights movement. You all tell me to go and hide my tail between my legs. I will not no longer put up with it. She was considered kind of disruptive and a loud mouth. I believe in us getting our rights or else I would not be out there fighting for our rights. Sylvia Rivera died in 2002. That same year, New York State passed a gay rights bill that despite Sylvia's dying wishes, did not include protections for trans people. Even on her deathbed, she fought for the rights of her people. Across the country, in California, three years before Stonewall, a similar uprising had taken place. It had been mostly forgotten until historian Susan Stryker stumbled on an obscure San Francisco gay magazine. I found this beautiful document, and um, I open it up, and the centerfold is this thing that says, on a hot August night in 1966, gays rose up. At Jean Compton's cafeteria, a 24-hour diner popular with transgender women, another routine police sweep erupted in spontaneous violence. Stryker made a film about the uprising. A police car was destroyed, the corner newsstand was set on fire, and years of pent-up resentment boiled out into the night. It was the first collective militant action against police harassment that we know of in U.S. history by trans and queer people. And the cops thought they were dealing with people who were like the lowest rung of society. That kind of attitude is something that trans people are still fighting against today. Whatever people think is shocking about transgender people's lives is nothing compared to the injustice that we have to face every freaking day. Professor Jennifer Finney Boylan teaches in the English department at Barnard College and has written a best-selling memoir. To be trans means to be visible. If you walk out your door, it can mean you are at risk for violence. Transgender people are disproportionately the targets of violent hate crimes. Between 2017 and 2021, the number of trans people murdered in the U.S. nearly doubled. Transgender people are also at greater risk for suicide. Alcorn's suicide note ended with a plea. My death needs to mean something. Fix society, please. What's shocking is that young people like Leela Alcorn have to throw themselves in front of a truck rather than live their lives. Over the past decade, there have been hard-fought victories to protect the nation's estimated 1.6 million transgender people, including a landmark 2020 decision from the Supreme Court. A major decision on civil rights, the 1964 Civil Rights Act that bans discrimination based on race, religion, and sex, also bans job decisions because of sexual orientation and gender identity. It was the kind of protection that trans people had spent decades fighting for but it was soon followed by a cultural backlash. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. And a rollback of some rights that had seemed like a given. 
The transgender community in the United States is reeling as Republican lawmakers and prominent conservative figures try to curtail their rights. A record number of bills relating to health care, access to bathrooms, even drag performances. Hundreds of bills restricting access to gender-affirming health care, sports teams, and bathrooms were introduced in nearly every state in 2023. Not all of them will become law, though dozens have passed. When there are laws that make it legal to discriminate against trans people, it has a visceral effect on our socioeconomic growth and development. Sylvia will be pissed the hell off that we're still fighting and struggling and we're still dying. We'll know that our work is done when everyone can live the life that they love with honor and dignity.